Okay, I'm going to drop the valves on this engine. <clears throat> what I've got done here is I just shoved a whole bunch of paper towels up in here to put pressure on that so that as I depress the spring, uh, these keepers will stay in place and the valves will stay in place. I've got a ignition wrench, a quarter inch ignition wrench, and a magnet that I'm going to use to catch this keeper as I depress this. And there's the keeper. Actually, I didn't even use the magnet. Let's do, the, do it on this side too. You just gotta be careful not to hold this that thing. There we go. So my old magnet trick works again. Let's put those things over there. Let's pull. Let's see if I can pull all this. Think about how difficult it was going to be to get these things out. <clears throat> One valve. Two valves. Valves are out. This is the exhaust valve. And it doesn't appear either this engine's been overhauled before or just this engine doesn't have a lot of runtime on it. I mean, it does have, I can feel a ridge of carbon deposits on there, but it doesn't look bad really. So, these are going to go in my ultrasonic bath as well as the head. I need to get that copper washer out. There we go. So, all of this is going to go in my ultrasonic cleaner when I get that out and set up as are those springs the keepers I'm not going to so let's move on to the rest of this here let's take this timing cover off so loose it didn't even feel like it was tight at all. I break them free like like this. So unfortunately I have no idea the history of this engine, where it came from other than I know that it came from my friend Jeremy, but I don't know where it came from prior to being in his possession. So you know the thing that I just thought of that's a cool thing is that on my 120S the tappets cam followers were flanged here so that they could go in only this way. This one since it came straight out obviously that isn't the case so I'll be able to use my timing tool to set the timing on this engine. Let's see if this gasket is going to survive. Yep. Gaskets and wonderful shape. That reminds me I need to take the one off of this before going in the cleaner. Alright. And there's that other cam follower. Now all we need to do is take this little set this pull this set screw up. This should just push right out. We'll see what kind of bearings this thing has, or spacers, shims, whatever you want to call them. Okay, it's got the two Teflon ones. 
one feels considerably thicker than the other. Those are two different thicknesses. And there we go. Now this can get cleaned as well as this. And there's our timing dot. We're in good shape there. Okay, now, crankcase. So, <clears throat> I just went to Harbor Freight today and got a puller here. I'm going to use to pull this collar off, but as you can see, I cut some notches in it so that it fits properly on this drive washer. So you can see how it fits nicely in there. Now what I'm going to go out and do now is I'm going to go out and apply some more heat. Some oil there. I'm going to heat this thing up and then just use this to pull that collar off. What size is that? I need to find, I got a crescent wrench I can use. Okay, so I've applied a small amount of heat to this. And just like that, that comes off. Boy, I like that tool. That tool worked extremely well. Now I can go heat this up get this crankshaft out of here. And I must be living right or something because this has literally been one of the easiest disassemblies that I've ever had. I mean all I did was take this out there after pulling this thing off. Took that out there and applied some heat. I didn't even need to tap this. As soon as I set it on the board like this I saw the crankshaft just drop, and it dropped out, and this bearing was still on it, so I was like, okay, great. So I, you know, got a six-inch extension, ratchet extension, and put up here and here, and tapped this one time, and this bearing came out, just like that, and it feels beautiful. And then I literally only had to tap this like two times just to get this bearing to fall right off of here, so I don't know. This bearing doesn't feel like it needs to be cleaned up at all. I may just use some alcohol and scrub this and try and clean it up a little bit, but it doesn't look bad at all. It feels perfect. So at this point, I'm not even sure these bearings need to be replaced, but I did want to take this out because you can see there's some crud in there. I want to clean this engine up and make it all look nice and pretty because that's how I like my engines. So we're going to put these parts, I'm going to pull the ultrasonic cleaner out, put these parts in there and start the process of seeing if we can get some of these parts cleaned up a bit more. And then uh, I'll take on this carb a little bit later on.